So uh, my name's Sean. I'm uh, with the Wounded Warrior Project. I'm here to talk, obviously, about veterans, about what Wounded Warrior Project does and how we can kind of activate that veteran presence when it comes to riding. Uh, but first, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history about me so you guys can understand my, my love affair that is with cycling. Um, I hadn't ridden a bike since I was probably 14. Um, and then I got blown up. Um, I got injured. Uh, was not a fun uh, event for me. Uh, ended up coming back stateside. Uh, didn't immediately go in for care. I actually got sent out on recruiting duty. While I was out on recruiting duty, I chose to, well, I attempted, luckily it didn't take cold, to end my life. Um, so with all of these different warning flags, they're like, hey, hey, let's get you into a hospital. So they sent me into a hospital. Uh, while I was in hospital, I got up to 13 different medications. Uh, there's an official word for it, but it's when you kind of zombify and I'm just kind of not detached to anything, ballooned in weight. Um, I know it don't look like it, but I used to be a rather suave, uh, good-looking U.S. Marine. I did 14 years in the Marine Corps Infantry, um, and I ballooned out, right? I was starting to gain massive weight, depression, all that other stuff. I'm in the hospital. I'm supposed to be getting taken better care of. But uh, I'm, I got told by one of the senior leaders, like, hey, you're not a Marine anymore. You're just a patient waiting to get discharged. And I'm like, I just spent 14 years of my life as a U.S. Marine. That is who and what I identify as. I'm also a husband and a father. But first thing anybody would ever ask me, like, who are you? I don't say Sean. I don't say I'm a husband and a father. I don't say that I'm a Cowboys fan, even though I am. Um, I know, it's sad. I, I've, I've learned to live with that part of my life. I said I'm a Marine. Today, I still want to start off with saying I'm a Marine. That's how much it's ingrained in me. And I had one of my senior leaders look at me and go, ha ha, that's not you anymore, right? So here I am. A patient in care, going to mental health appointments every week, going to occupational therapy appointments every week, physical therapy appointments every week, rehabilitation program, um, the Warrior Athletic Rehabilitation Program at that, um, at the Wounded Warrior Battalion. And they had a wide variety of adaptive sports. The idea was to get you re-engaged, right? To get you to try something. Um, I had individuals who were in hospital with me, they were amputees, burn victims, cancer, like you, the, the entire gambit when it comes down to it is the people that are being treated, not just combat wounded. And they're trying to figure out how do we get these individuals engaged? How do we get them to want to reuse their body again? Um, and I'll admit, I was like, I don't care about any of this, right? Because I was on the zombie mode. I did not, I was just like, I show up so I don't get in trouble. I've been told that my, my life goals are over. What's, what's the, why, why should I give a care about any of this? So I went from the swimming program to the working out hard, wheelchair basketball, tried all these different things. And then this little lady walked in. And I don't mean that to be demeaning. I'm six foot three, and I'm currently 270, a dainty 270. Um, at the time, I was probably about 6'3", 250. And this lady walked in that was all about yay tall and maybe 100 pounds. Um, and was like, I'm going to break you. And I was like, huh? <laughs> and she was a, in charge of the cycling program. I had gotten rotated to cycling to see if that was going to work. I showed up for my first ride, right? She fitted me on, on this, uh, I think it was a Cannondale at the time. Get out there. And there was a bunch of really weird shaped human beings wearing spandex. All right, so we had a bunch of patients, right? Some of them looked like the super fit, you see them on TV Marines, and then there's people like me that were on the far side. And then everywhere in between, amputees, the whole nine yards, I was like, this mongrel group, and they're all wearing spandex. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 not for me. And I'm backing away from the door. Like, <laughs> and she's right behind me going, nope, um, pushed me right in, right? I go on my first ride. It was about five miles. And I felt good at the end of it. And I was confused. It was just like five miles. It wasn't a big ride. I was like, all right, well, I'll come back next week. For whatever reason, I like that. And then the next week happens. And now I'm, I'm not wearing spandex. But I did buy the mountain bike shorts. Because I was like, I need that chamois. Uh, I need that chamois in my life as quickly as possible. Right? So I'm wearing the mountain bike shorts. I'm like, all right, this is my life. And I get more into it, more into it. And then I end up uh, with a different program. Uh, it's called Project Hero now, but it was Ride to Recovery back then. I went on their Detroit to Chicago ride. Um, they flew me out there, and I did, you know, hundreds of miles over the course of one week, and we rode between the two cities. I was like, holy cow, this is awesome. And by the end of it, I was like, I didn't understand. I was cutting weight. I was re-engaged. I was wanting to talk to people. And she was like, it's the most social, anti-social activity you could do. If you don't want to talk and you're in a group ride, nobody expects you to talk. You can just sit there, but you're with people. You're re-engaging with people even if you're not communicating, right? You're even communicating when you're not talking. If I get tired, I can chicken wing myself out and move back in behind the pack and I'm doing all right. But I'm still with a group. And even when I wasn't talking and we're just sitting around afterwards and they're just, you know, throwing water at each other and goofing off, even though I wasn't actively engaging, I was still with that group. I was still hearing the jokes. I was 
partially there. By the end of it, before I transferred out of that unit, I was the one wearing spandex, going around with click clack, click clacks at my clip-ons because I was super cool at this point, right? And I'm grabbing random people like, oh, you got to try out riding, man. This is the best thing you're ever going to do in your life, right? We got the hand cycle. We got this. We got that. I was all about it. So cycling literally changed my aspect in life. Uh, while I was there, I actually fought and returned to full duty. I deployed again afterwards. Um, and I would ride my, at this point I, I got re-injured, I would ride my recumbent from my house on base housing into my shop. And I was an infantry guy wearing spandex, trucking into an infantry battalion like, hey guys, not caring because it brought me so much joy, right? That level of connection, we lose a lot of that when we get out of the military. On the daily, when I was in the barracks and I was a Marine, I have 100 plus people in my barracks alone that know me, know my name, know a little bit about me, might know my family, might know this, might know that, somebody I can turn to and talk to. I can go like, hey, who wants to go to lunch? Now, I served 14 years. Some people serve 20, some serve four. Either way, that's a long period of time. They go home and there's nothing. Maybe a friend or two still from high school that haven't moved away. Some of them may still be engaged in high school level activities that you don't want to be engaged with. Some of them might be doing successful, but that social network you had when you left is no longer there. Cycling is great because cycling's everywhere. There's a local shop somewhere that does group rides. There's a way to reconnect and get engaged. So that's what cycling was for me. So I ended up riding with Ride to Recovery. I ended up doing the Soul Drive with Wounded Warrior Project, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. I have my recumbent that I ride routinely. I got a trainer so I could ride during the winter because I'm not crazy. If it's cold out, you're not gonna see me anywhere involved or in the vicinity. If there's snow on the ground, I live in Pennsylvania. There's snow way too often and I don't like cold. Um, I'm up here for my wife's family, not because I'll enjoy the weather. But the moment it gets cold, I'm hiding in. But at the same time, I can go down to the Y and there is a bunch of people sitting on trainers, trucking away, because they're just like me. We're the snow bunnies of riding. We're not willing to go out when it's, I don't know, if it's 60 degrees, I'm questioning it. Um, yeah, I know. I know my body will warm up, but for those first few minutes when I'm just sitting there waiting for the ride, I'm like, no, this is cold, I don't like this. Um, so I'll be the one sitting in the van until we start, right? So cycling is a really great connection. And that's when we're talking about getting veterans engaged, getting veterans who want to get on the bikes, get out there and ride. It's the connection piece. It's letting them know that they're welcome and as soon as they show up, that they're gonna be able to jump on and have a group that has a shared hobby and a shared passion. Uh, so for Wounded Warrior Project, we have Soldier Ride, right? So within us, our Soldier Ride program is a clinic that introduces you or reintroduces you, depending on your, your style and your background, into cycling. You show up, we're gonna fit you to a bike, but we're also gonna find what bike fits for you, right? Should you be on an upright? Should you be on a recumbent? Should you be on a hybrid? Should you have electric shifting because you can't use your left hand? Do we have to figure out the braking? Do we need to rewire stuff? What is it? And then we're gonna get you on a bike that works for you. And then we're gonna get you out doing different distance rides. And we're gonna get you into spandex, which I know it's not actually spandex, but everybody can go back to those uh, old school workout aerobic videos and that's what you feel like you're in when you're walking around in it sometimes. And we're gonna get you out there with a bunch of veterans doing that shared hobby, being introduced to you can have that sense of community again. And a lot of these individuals, when they return back, are looking for those local shops so they can get on that group ride. So a big thing for connecting with these different uh, veterans groups is finding out if there is a veteran uh, group in your area that already rides. A great example is Project Hero. Project Hero has hubs and groups that ride all across the nation. There's one here in Xenia. Z Z I can't pronounce it. If I mess it up and you're local, I'm sorry. But there's one here that's based here, right? So there's a group of veterans that link up through Project Hero and they go riding. They would love to know a shop that would want them out on a group ride to join in on. Not only does that obviously have benefits of getting more people coming in out of your door, but you're connecting veterans with a larger community. You're letting them know that they're welcome, that they're, they're admired, that they're take, gonna be taken care of. So it's those small things. Now, some of the barriers to getting veterans to ride. Cycling can get expensive, especially when we're getting into adaptive cycling and we're looking at the costs of uh, a recumbent, right? Especially if it needs something beyond just what a normal recumbent has. And we're starting talking about like, well, this person's gonna need you know, all the gears shifted over to one side because they're a single arm amputee. Um, they also only have partial control, so we need to have these controls that are a little bit more modified to be able to work with whatever is good on their potentially salvaged limb, whatever it may be. There's a lot into that. So these flyers that I have up here, pamphlets, whatever we're gonna call them, guides, um, kind of walk through. The VA has a very great program to get adaptive sports material. It's very underutilized and a lot of people don't even know it exists. You can go into some VA hospitals and the doctors there don't know it exists. So this kind of walks veterans through the process of how to get engaged with that, um, how to get a bike, 
So a lot of it is you have to also prove that you're going to use this hobby. So a way you can help veterans get into cycling, get into a bike, is doing rides where you invite them out. Like, hey, even if you don't have a bike, come out, join us, and we can talk to you about how to get you onto a bike. And it's not just sales for your shop, but that's being able to integrate them with the VA Adaptive Sports, where they're now going to be able to get the VA to pay for that bike out of your shop potentially. So partnering with your local VA hospital, the rec therapy specialists that are there, the whole nine yards is a way to engage that uh, veteran community. A lot of the VA hospitals, I know uh, one in particular that's in the back of my mind, actually have a, a short trailer that has a handful of bikes that were donated to them so they can get veterans to try them out. So they can get them out onto the road to see if it's something that they're gonna do long term. And that's not just recycling, wheelchair basketball. They're able to help them get the, the um, Wheel, wheelchairs, <laughs> help them get the basketball wheelchairs and things along those lines. So looking at the long-term utilization of cycling for those that have various injuries, they're across the board. So having a great fit tech that's able to help them and walk them through it and give them a second where they might not have that descriptive word to describe why I don't feel right on this bike. For me, the re one of the main reasons I had to switch from uprights, or at least I thought, was because I kept hearing my knee pop. Had nothing to do with my knee pop, which was bad enough. And yes, I probably shouldn't have been in an upright because my knee was popping. But I didn't know how to describe my back pain because my back pain is continuous. It's become such integrated in my life, I don't think to mention it until somebody goes like, hey, how's your back feel in this position? I'm like, well, it's tight, but it's always tight. Hey, how's your arms feel? Is there any tingling when you're leaning forward? This is when I was on an upright. Is there any tingling? I was like, well, I have permanent tingling in my left arm. I don't know. So they might be a little bit harder to fit. So looking into those things, talking to different groups that are doing it, again, I, I keep mentioning them because they're one of the first ones that helped me out, and I know that there's a, a hub here locally, but uh, Project Hero is a great example. They help people learn how to get fit. <laughs> Not <laughs> fit, but fit to a bike, as we all know for our terminology. Um, I did have a video to, that I was going to play, um, but it wasn't working quite right. Um, but all I was going to do is really talk and give some real-life examples of how cycling saves lives. It really has. Um, I'm a living example, so I'm using that instead of the video. Um, I contribute my bike and the miles that I put in there, the wind therapy that I've gotten from it, to the reason I'm still standing here. I mentioned in the beginning, but for those of you who joined in, I'm a suicide survivor, right? I had given up on everything. I was spiraling out of control, and a lot of people, when you hear my story, go, all right, well, he was 14 years in the Marine Corps, infantry guy got blown up, that's probably how he almost died. I guess that technically is how I almost died, but the closest to death I got was when I got behind the wheel of my vehicle. When I turned on the ignition and I knew which overpass I was gonna be going at, right? That was the closest I actually got to death. And one of the biggest things that got me my mental recovery was cycling and knowing that there were groups out there. One of the coolest things that I love to, to share with people is when I was traveling cross country, when I got my first job with Wounded Warrior Project, I was gonna live in Colorado Springs. I knew they had a great cycling community. My bike kind of got, um, my poor cat trike may or may not have been strapped down well by me and went airborne at one point in time. Um, so I went to just a local shop. I don't even remember where it was. It was maybe it was Virginia, Kentucky, somewhere when I was driving west. And they're like, oh, yeah, we can. Luckily, the frame wasn't busted up, but like the gears looked all jacked. They're like, oh, we got it back together. I did a quick little test ride in the parking lot. It's like, all right, sweet. We're good. I got to Colorado Springs. And for some reason, it just was not letting me shift anywhere. And I was losing my mind. I had no idea what was going on because I'm not a bike tech. And... I went shop to shop until I could find somebody to figure out what was wrong with it. That was the best thing ever because every single shop was adamantly trying to help me. They're like, hey, we don't work on recumbents at the first shop I went to, but hey, we'll take a look and see if there's something that we can just look at and visually be like, hey, that's it. Because there are some commonalities. It's like, nope, not us. Hey, try this shop next. I know that they've sold recumbents in the past. And they got me around and it ended up being a really basic thing that everybody thought everybody else was gonna check for. The shop that I went to shortened my chain um, significantly. I didn't know. I just knew that I had my bike and it wasn't shifting. And they were like, again, I went to shops that didn't have it, but every shop was actively trying to help me. Not a single one of them was trying to sell me on anything. They're just like, what can we do to get you on the road? When I came here last year, I forgot to bring my, <laughs> just say there's a key piece to my bike that, you know, kind of sort of may keep the wheel attached to it that I forgot to bring with me when I was packing it in the back of the van. I stopped at a local shop here and they're like, not only did they just were like, oh, easy. They wouldn't let me pay for it. Right? Not every shop's gonna do that. I get that, not everybody's in a situation for that, but that's the introduction I had as a veteran to cycling. So whenever you get a veteran into your shop, 
a lot of them, if they walked in and they're telling you like, oh yeah, I did this when I was at, you know, Wounded Warrior Battalion East or the Soldier Recovery Unit or with the Navy Safe Harbor, Air Force Wounded Warriors, they got introduced to cycling when they're at their lowest and it was something that helped them. So they're already wanting to engage with you. That next step, that whatever baby step you got, you got a recurring customer for years. Um, I go to the same shop that does nothing with recumbents, but they're amazing in Pittsburgh and they absolutely love me. And I swing through there continuously, even when I don't have things to do, just because I want to say hi. Because um, that's where all of our rides ride out of, right? So veterans, if anything, are very loyal. Once you get them and they know that they're welcome in an area, they're going to abuse that. I'm just letting you know, uh, we may, you may or may not find us in sleeping bags inside of your shops. Uh, we may invite you to our, our kids' birthdays. It's ridiculous. But once you accept us in the community, that's how you keep those veterans around. So again, one of the best ways to engage with veterans and get them to join in with you though, is working with veteran organizations that are already out there doing it, bring them in, right? Warrior Rides, Project Hero, uh, us with Soldier Ride. Um, I'll give another example. Um, I'm part of the alumni program within Wounded Warrior Project. I host events for veterans. I have a local shop. We go there about once or twice a year. They give me a huge discount on renting bikes. So I just bring a bunch of veterans out, rent bikes for them, and we go on rides just to get them re-engaged. So technically there's a profit end to that where you know, they might not be making as much as they do on rentals, but a bike that's just sitting in your shop not being rented for the day or it goes out slightly cheaper, I'm now bringing 20 veterans out. 20 veterans that are getting re-engaged with cycling, now know that you're a veteran facing shop and are something that they're probably gonna wanna engage with in the future. So um, sorry that the video didn't quite work out for us. If you joined us late, I do have these cool guides. Quick reminder, what's in that guide? Um, it is orientated towards Wounded Warrior Project. Obviously, that's, that's who I am, but it walks the veteran through how to get VA funding to get an adaptive cycle. Um, sorry that there's nothing groundbreaking. I promised that at the beginning for those that were here, um, but it is what it's like to work with veterans.